This Friday marks the anniversary uh, of the death of uh, former US President uh, John F. Kennedy. Uh, and, and to be honest, like a lot of uh, people who uh, perhaps died earlier than they should have done, that's what is remembered uh, about them. But you feel that there's far more to this man uh, than just the, the, all the conspiracy theories and the bizarre nature well, of him passing. That, that, I mean, that's, that's right. I mean, you know, on, on the one thing, the death of Kennedy um, is remembered in history for, for two crucial reasons. The first being the number of different conspiracies and the number of different answers. And the, the majority of people, allegedly, in America disbelieve the official reason for which Kennedy was killed. Uh, now, I have to admit, I have absolutely nothing to say on this because I have no time for any of the conspiracy theories whatsoever. Uh, however, it is kind of interesting, I think, that um, that the conspiracy theories around JFK's death, because it, what it says about us as people, that we seem completely unwilling or perhaps unable to accept the fact that John F. Kennedy, this glamorous, powerful man, was taken out by a, a, a lone, obsessive individual. Uh, for, it was, you know, we, we can't believe it's that easy. Mm. Uh, and of course, I think this reflects an awful lot about us, that we like uh, big narratives, we like big descriptions of things going on. And Lee Harvey Oswald does not give us that big description. We want to talk about the mafia, or we want to talk about um, uh, the CIA, and so on and so forth. So I, I think it speaks a lot of us and our ability uh, to see such a big man in Kennedy um, taken down by such a small man and without any rhyme or reason or any big understanding. So I think that's what stems the conspiracy theory. But on, on the, uh, you know, the political front, part of the Kennedy clan, um, he was very successful in his own right, wasn't he? Oh, Some of the things that he did then, yeah. we still see today. I mean, th th this is the thing uh, with, with Kennedy and Kennedy's legacy is, he was an extremely successful uh, president, I, I, I argue, in his time. But of course, this is the thing, right? We look at his three years uh, as president of the United States and he doesn't have the rest of it. So it leads us to a number of counterfactual discussions. Would Vietnam have happened to the extent that it happened had Kennedy lived? We know Kennedy put advisors into Vietnam. You know, Kennedy is not absolved from blame on Vietnam. But, you know, if you read a number of recent studies on him, for example, Thurston Clark's um, um, uh, Kennedy, the last hundred days, it strongly posits that it wouldn't have panned out in the way it did had Kennedy have lived. We fill in an awful lot of the blanks. Mm. And the glamour of Kennedy and the good things he did remain. And he doesn't have that he doesn't have that second term slump that presidents have. Having got elected, have to grind through, you know. Do you think he'd have got in again? I, yes, I, 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 again, we're on counterfactual things. I suspect that he would. And, uh, you know, there, there's a number of different reasons. If we look at his three years in charts, firstly, his masterful handling of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, now, critics would say, of course, that the fact that there was a Cuban Missile Crisis in the first place was part and parcel of, <laughs> of his actions over the Bay of Pigs, for example. However, you know, Kennedy found himself in this middle ground position of, on the one hand, hawks in America wanting to go in and bomb Cuba, uh, and Kennedy saw that an attack on Cuba uh, would lead by attack on the Soviet Union on West Germany, uh, and that w to which then they would have to retaliate and there would be a tit for tat, and the potential situation in which that would leave them uh, would be problematic. On the other hand, as that was happening, it seemed that the Soviet command in uh, was was crumbling, and he never knew precisely who he was talking with and who he was dealing with. And in that uncertainty, um, Kennedy showed immense diplomatic skill and an extreme sophistication of understanding of, of politics, and rejected a hawkish option. Uh, so, was extremely powerful. Two other less spoken about pieces of legislation, um, uh, I think it's worth, and that's first of all is. Uh, 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 test ban treaties and his work on the limitation of nuclear weapons based upon his experience, which he was extremely successful on. And finally, not his legislation, but Lyndon Baines Johnson's legislation was the Civil Rights Act. Uh, but uh, Kennedy's fingerprints are all over that. Um, he, um, you know, he had 
two speeches within a couple of days, uh, you know, in, in a sort of three or four months before we died. One was about limiting nuclear arms spreading and the other was about civil rights. Uh, and there were two passions of him. He broadly succeeded in one but was cut down before he was able to bring through and Lyndon Baines Johnson uh, brought through the um, Civil Rights Act. So it's very much his fingerprints on that piece of legislation. You're only a young man. You won't even remember uh, John F. Kennedy. He wasn't around in your time. Why, over a period of years, have you grown to like this man so much? Somebody you never knew, you, you perhaps heard yeah. of, uh, started with the, the, uh, the famous assassination. Why, why has he become a bit of a hero for you? Well, I think there's potentially two responses to that. Uh, the, the first being is Kennedy, in some ways, seems like the first modern politician uh, in the sense that we're, we're always talking about spin and image. And now, Kennedy was exceptionally canny on creating an image of himself as being this young, vigorous um, uh, politician who had a baton passed to him from, uh, from the old generation taking politics to a new level. Brilliant at uh, his own personal image perception. We all can think about these images of Kennedy and how he managed to put himself forward. And, uh, and so the, in, he is interesting from an academic point of view, that as a first modern politician who was able to really control the, and harness the visual image and, and how that dominates politics together. And, and secondly, there is a, a massive romance uh, around Kennedy, the, the image of him, that he was um, of a new generation. He was extremely liberal um, as a president. I think a case could be made that he is the most liberal president of the United States that they have ever elected. Um, uh, he loved England. He was an extremely Anglophile uh, president um, and someone who, despite his immense flaws as an individual, and I think, you know, presidents go through re-evaluations re all the time that we, we're re-looking at their record. And, and recently, Kennedy's record has been as about as low as this stock has been because people are focusing on his personal life, of which there were immense flaws. Um, and I suspect the reason we're looking at it is because at the moment we're quite suspicious of politicians. The expenses scandal and all that have caused us to be quite suspicious of these things. But he also has immense strengths. He, he portrayed himself as being this young and vigorous um, politician. Of course, he was nothing of the self. He saw he was one of the sickest president of the United States that there have ever been, and yet battled on. And I find that immensely encouraging as, as an individual. I think he's quite inspirational. I thought his understanding of world politics and his understanding of um, human rights and civil rights were immense. So I think there's this romance about him. But I want to add a massive caveat to that. You know, you ask the question, um, why are you interested in this person? Again, we've been, a, he didn't have that second term. Now he could have gone on and become an extremely, extremely successful United uh, States president. But he could have gone on and been embroiled in political um, sort of upheaval. Let's compare him to Obama at, at, the, at the moment. That Obama came through on a wave of hope. But the turgid debates going on and on at the moment about Obamacare or whatever, whatever the rights and wrongs of the situation, that in these difficult second terms, it becomes, you know, that some of the, sh the sheen and the gloss has been taken off. Of course, Kennedy never had this. Uh, and, and so an awful lot of his reputation is what we create in his own mind. Um, but the fact that he had such a glamorous image was partly of his own making. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.